Well, let's uh, come to this. The bail judgment for the five co-accused in the Tabobesa prison escape will be delivered on Monday. And our senior reporter, Linda Lomasagane, joins us live now from Bloemfontein to give us uh, an update, or at least context as well, as to what exactly happened in court this morning. Good morning to you, Slee. Uh, a pleasure talking to you. But this time around, we understand when it comes to this bail application, these were actually the closing remarks uh, of the defense. But we, of course, do expect that uh, that decision will be delivered by the court and the judge only on Monday the 29th. Certainly so. The magistrate um, requires, of course, some time to consider the arguments that were put before him in terms of uh, the closing arguments by the defense as well as the state, uh, who we, of course, know is opposing the five bail applications of the co accused uh, in the Tabo Best Escape Saga. We already know that an agreement um, has been reached last month already um, in the case of Zoli Lesegeleni, who's already out on 10,000 rand. Bail. He is the father of Dr. Nandipa and, of course, was in court during the last um, appearance of all eight accused in the main matter. Now, uh, what we heard today was, in essence, some clarity uh, statements or submissions from the defense in terms of what was put uh, by the state yesterday in their closing arguments with regards to uh, the charges that the accused are facing um, that range from fraud, corruption, defeating the ends of justice, um, um, uh, as well as aiding and uh, abetting uh, Tabo Besta, from, uh, who of course is a convicted felon from lawful custody. So um, what the defense was then trying to uh, show the magistrate today was that in essence the, um, the merits of the case should not be in essence considered or not a lot of weight should be put on the merits of the case against the accused saying that is the matter for the trial court and saying all the bail court needs to consider uh, is whether there is a, an issue of the accused reoffending um, or whether they could evade their trial. Let's just take a listen to what one of the lawyers um, had to say with regards to the issue of the possibility of the accused being flight risks. Your Worship, the court did not have insight in as far as that is concerned. That we can concede, that the state <coughs> would have insight because the documents were handed over to, to the police officers. But even with that said, Your Worship, one's travel history, unless it can be proven that it makes him a flight risk, has nothing to do with this. When one receives a passport, we take passports for one reason and one reason only, to travel. Nothing else. No one takes a passport to keep it at home and do nothing with so it. So you agree that that was not disclosed to court because the argument that I had is that same was not disclosed to this court. Indeed so, Your Worship. It was not disclosed by the first and fourth applicant, but we know that this court now knows. And how does this court know? There was oral evidence that was led to that extent. And the court cannot say, simply because it was not disclosed, it becomes a problem. The fact that the passport themselves were tendered should count in the applicant's favor. What is even more is that once now the court is aware of the travel nature of the applicants, the court can now safely say, come to a conclusion. And that is our submission. Well, of course, it seems that uh, according to the defense lawyer, Katlago Mururi, for accused one, Sinohe Matswara, and accused seven, uh, Diego Makhotza, as we've listened there, Sli, definitely defending his clients that they're not uh, flight risks. But as well, interesting that he conceded that his clients did not disclose their travel history necessarily. Which is what uh, the magistrate also put into question to say uh, many of the submissions that were made today uh, by the defense were things that were not canvassed in their affidavits. And uh, the magistrate uh, really found it peculiar to say you're bringing up all of these um, issues now, but these were never actually stated um, in the affidavits that were put forward by the accused in uh, their applications for bail. What the state did was, of course, bring the investigating officer 
officer uh, who was the one who revealed many um, of uh, the issues that were uh, canvassed today with regards to the travel history um, and of course uh, whether or not the accused are primary caregivers uh, for their children. They all have children um, and they've all told the court that they need to be released on bail because uh, they're breadwinners. Um, some also want to seek new employment after being dismissed from the Mangamun Correctional uh, Center. So um, what the magistrate was then trying to um, figure out was how much weight then uh, w does he put on the accused perhaps being primary caregivers, if they are at all, because according to the states, the accused um, aren't necessarily primary caregivers, even though some of them do live uh, with their children. Let's take a listen. The second applicant in this matter has seven children, and they are all staying with him. And uh, I would recall we further said to this court that um, after, just before, this escape, he then married uh, the current wife that she's staying with. Now, it then means he is the person who's solely responsible for care of his children. All the rights and responsibilities are upon him insofar as these children are concerned. Because you'd recall also the investigating officer when he testified, he said um, the four children are from different mothers. They do not belong to the current wife. So I, I'm saying that um, he is solely responsible for, for these children. Your Worship, this issue was also addressed in the matter of State versus Peterson, 2008 to SACR 355C, wherein the court said, in as much as a decision in regard to an accused bail application and subsequent appeal, uh, should the bail be uh, refused, will of necessity impact upon a child of the accused. It may not be lost sight that the child's best interests are, in terms of Section 28.2 of the Constitution, paramount. Uh, so that's, that's basically what I'm saying. The, the interests of the minor, of the children of the uh, applicant number two are, are, are uh, of paramount. Well, it seems to me, Slee, that the court went to great lengths, at least the judge and his engagement here with the defense, in terms of you know, differentiating between primary caregiver, breadwinner, and a parent that lives with you know, his or her children. So that clarity sounded to me like was important to the judge uh, to not only be ventilated, but to be differentiated. Certainly so, because if the accused are deemed primary caregivers, um, that means that their children solely rely on them, not only financially, but, you know, uh, in terms of emotional support, etc. So, um, you know, the Children's Act, um, in essence, um, obligates the court to really put a lot of weight on the fact that um, someone who is accused is a primary caregiver, meaning that their chances perhaps of um, receiving bail um, will, will grow. You know, there's a higher likelihood of somebody who's a primary caregiver um, to a number of children uh, to be granted bail due to the fact that the Children's Act um, obligates the court to, um, you know, really consider that, consider that um, when uh, deciding or not, deciding whether somebody is going to be granted bail or not. So I think the magistrate does have um, a lot of thinking to do, uh, especially around the submissions made um, on the children um, and the accused and whether they are primary caregivers, uh, because, you know, as the state is opposing these bail applications, they have put forward that the accused are not only just facing very serious charges, but uh, perhaps if they are then released on bail, uh, the likelihood is that the public may then not have as much confidence um, in the criminal justice system, um, you know, uh, talking about the public outcry and the fallout um, that might ensue if the accused are released on bail. Hmm. And also, Slee, I mean, uh, do you think the judge uh, could perhaps uh, 
you know, consider the safety of the suspects. Um, should they be granted bail, do you think? I remember this also came out during, uh, you know, Tabo Besta being apprehended at the Hosi Mamburu. I mean, there were different analysts coming on, even right here to ENCA, uh, you know, even media asking those questions as to uh, whether he is safe uh, in the cells where he's apprehended, uh, whether he is a danger to himself as well. Um, questions around safety of all accused. Uh, one wonders if that's also, uh, you know, one of the considerations the judge might take before deliberating on that decision. Certainly so. It was one of the submissions made by the state to say that uh, due to the fact that uh, the accused have been fingered or implicated in the escape um, of Tabo Besto, who of course we know is a convicted murderer, a rapist, um, somebody who was removed from society, uh, that the fact that uh, the accused, um, uh, you know, are accused of facilitating his escape from prison, um, this of course may put their own lives at risk if they are released on bail and perhaps it's safer for them um, to remain behind bars but what their lawyers then uh, put forward to the court um, in their affidavits and in their submissions um, and in arguments was the fact that um, the accused are kept quite far uh, from Bloemfontein and um, for them to be able to consult, for them to be able to craft the defense um, ahead of their trials, um, it's, it's making it quite difficult for their lawyers um, to be able to consult with the accused, saying that their continued um, stay behind bars also um, is affecting them financially, you know, uh, for those who are still trying to seek work, like Nastasia Janssen and uh, Diego Makotza, who were dismissed from um, the Mangun Correctional Center, they can't look for work um, if they're behind bars. Uh, accused number one, Sinuhe Matsuara, uh, we were told he was in the midst of claiming um, his UIF. Um, and of course, uh, we know uh, Debo Hodopolo, accused number three, and accused number six, uh, Buti um, uh, Masukela, they also um, have children, they have um, wives, um, and they rely on getting odd jobs. Um, here and there in order to be, to be able to provide for their families. So there are different aspects in which um, the magistrate is going to have to deal with um, in order to come to a decision. And I think it's going to be interesting to see um, whether or not they all get bail, whether some will get bail, um, and the reasons that are going to be put forward by the magistrate in granting or denying bail um, for the five accused. But I think from hearing the arguments or, or the submissions today, um, it does seem that uh, top of the list is certainly whether or not the accused are primary caregivers to their children. All right. Well, colleague, before I let you go, just briefly, any update from the NPA in response to Nandipa Magudumana's filing uh, that she deems her arrest unlawful, um, which, of course, uh, apprehended out in Tanzania? Do we have an update on that? Not as yet. We are expecting, of course, that uh, that matter will be heard in the High Court um, here in Bloemfontein tomorrow. And, of course, before we get into the merits of that particular application, her lawyers are going to have to uh, show the courts that the actual application um, is urgent. So before we get into the merits of that application, uh, we're first going to hear arguments around urgency. And, of course, we already know that uh, the Home Affairs Department that had a briefing earlier this week also wants to be joined um, onto this application as a respondent. Um, we, at this stage, um, aren't, uh, haven't been given any information um, as to whether the NPA has filed their responding papers. Um, however, of course, we will be monitoring uh, developments around that particular case as well. And I think it's also going to be interesting to see uh, whether or not uh, Dr. Nandipa will be brought to the High Court uh, for that particular sitting. All right, INC senior reporter, Sindra Masekane, we leave it there, colleague, uh, for this uh, morning. In terms of uh, just court uh, uh, being adjourned today, this after closing remarks and submissions being made uh, by the defense representing their clients, the five co-accused in this uh, Tabo Besta escape saga. The judge will, of course, uh, deliberate on that decision and uh, will deliver uh, a decision on Monday, the 29th of May. All right.